Uh, okay. All right, um, well, welcome back. All right, uh, I was practically waiting for the numbers to improve, but I think the numbers have. Okay, um, well, welcome back. So I was saying um, that um, if you have to capture the audience, you have to put out or you want to grasp their attention over that of the competitors because they are moving about you have to put or put a something that it might be the creative the creative here when we talk about creative here creative here means you're doing a video maybe it's a video or is is a picture or whatever is a designed copy these are called creatives the creative has to um be top notch and maybe let's say if it's instagram for instance, we know Instagram is a platform where people love beautiful or high quality pictures and videos. And that's Instagram for you, high quality pictures and videos. So if you're putting out anything on Instagram, if you have to capture the attention of people, first of all, your, your video has to be attention grabbing enough. If it is, if it is um, talking about their problem that you want to solve. You have to bring out something that is peculiar to that problem that has to pop up on the screen first so that the people that have this problem immediately they see it, they can stick you to the screen. Even people that do not have that problem sometimes will still have to watch it. And you never know. Maybe from those who do not have it, they might know that, oh, wow, I think I know somebody that has this kind of thing. I can recommend your video to the person. Sometimes you see people share stuff to their loved ones on Instagram to their loved ones, they share the link to ask them to go and see because they have found it interesting or they have found it um, and informative enough. And how does that happen? It, it couldn't have happened if that um, whatever was put on that particular space wasn't attention grabbing enough to get their attention, first of all, to watch the video or to view the picture or to read the content that was written on it. If it's a copy, you have to transmit it to write something that is actually hell-bent on touching the emotions of the people that actually have these particular issues. Because people are more inclined to take action with their emotions, first of all, before they begin to think about it. That's why I always use this instance, and I always say it, that this is why, this is one of the problems that makes or keeps Nigeria where we are today as a people. So while we try to blame people that um, do um, that um, buy, they sell their votes for, for, for um, so those tiny amount of money that they sell their votes for, I try to look at it from the other end. Now, you have, there's a man, or let's say that a, a man has a family of five, five children plus his wife, and himself, that's sex. Maybe he doesn't have anything doing. He's not employed, or he has lost his job, or we know how the poverty rate in Nigeria is it's on the high. And his family has not eaten for, say, two days, three days, whatever. And um, there's hunger. He's hungry. He shouldn't be hungry. His family is hungry. And someone comes, wants to contest the election, and says, I'm giving you this amount of money, 2000 3000 most, most of the time it's not even up to that, but let's just say 2000 and 3000 naira. What do you think is the first thing in that man's mind at that? He's not thinking at that moment. At that moment, he's not acting based on 
what is, what is ahead should think this morning, how long will it carry me? What is this going to do for me? At that moment, what he's thinking about is how to get food to eat, how to solve hunger, how to make sure that his family eats. That is what he's thinking about. So he's acting on that emotion that is already in him. Hunger is a feeling, it's an emotion. He's already hungry. And that hunger is already making him, it has already finished up his mind. So his mind is not even thinking about what the money is, what is the money is to tie his future down and all of those stuff. So he will definitely collect it and vote and just sell his vote. That is just a simple scenario here now, which is not fair. But if you come online, you want to market or sell a product, it's more or less the same thing. You have someone who maybe you're selling um, a product um, um, for diabetic patients. Maybe you're selling a product for diabetic patients and the person has diabetes. And what you have to first of all do is to ensure that you tell this person you hit the problem direct so that the person stays glued to read it to the to, to see the so to look for the solution that you're willing to offer them. So you have to play on the emotions of that person because first of all, diabetes has given him some emotional trauma or her. Diabetes has made them maybe stop eating some certain kind of food, maybe has made them um, lost certain things that they did not want to lose. You have a solution to them and you feel like your solution is going to be the last solution. What do you do? Find a way to make sure that you play on their emotions first. You tell them, oh, okay, um, we know that. I know that um, um, you have lost, um, you stopped eating this, you stopped eating that, you stopped doing your favorite things because of um, you have this, this, this. The person will be glad to listen to you. So you stop uh, um, eating this food because of this. You notice the symptoms. These are the symptoms. Of course, there are different awareness levels. We are going to come to that as well. There are different awareness levels to people that you meet online. So yeah, these are one of them. So you have to, first of all, grasp the attention of people. The I is interesting. D is desire and A is action. We are going to come to that. But first of all, let's go back to marketing online. Now, when you're coming online to the marketing space, you want to market online, there are certain questions you have to ask yourself. The first is, who am I? Now, this who am I is not like personal, it's your business. Who am I? Who, who, this business I'm coming online, who am I? What, what are my mission? What's my mission as this brand or this business? What is my vision? What is the vision that my business has? What are the values that my business has to offer? Is a very, very important question. Why does my business exist? What is the reason that my business exists that I am coming online? Who am I as a business? It's an important question. It helps you know exactly Okay, uh, uh, let's see. Please confirm that you can see. My screen.
So if I can you see my screen, please. Can you guys hear me? Let me start from there. Yes, we can hear you. And we can see the screen. Yes, we can hear you. I can, can hear you screen. now. I've not been hearing you before, yes, but I can see you. And I can see your screen too. I can't hear anything again, Roma. I can't hear or see anything again. Can Samuel, I can't still hear anything. Okay, um, hold on a second. The facilitator is off the call. I think he's trying to switch his network. So just wait for a second. Thank you. Can you all hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so um, a lot of you have been complaining that you can't hear, so the facilitator had to go switch his network, so he's off the call. So he'll be coming back in shortly. All right, noted. Thank you. Okay. Oh, all right. 
Uh, 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 I'm so sorry. I think I I got thrown out of meeting. Uh, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's crazy, man. I don't know. I don't know. It's what is bad. Um, can you guys hear me now? Let me see. Hello, please can confirm you can hear me. Okay, all right. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can see it in the comment session. Thank you. All right, thank you, thank you. Uh, hopefully shares this time without knocking me you. out. Uh, that's my. Okay. All right, so I'm trying to share my screen. I don't know if that is contributing to it. They're knocking me out of Zoom. Okay. All right. Please now uh, confirm if you can see my screen as well as hearing me. So let me just get in, of course, like so many other technologies, of course. Okay. Um I don't know. Maybe it doesn't want me to share my screen. I don't know why. Once I share my screen, it's knocking me out. Let me try again. This last time. All right, guys, confirm you can see my screen and confirm you can hear me. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so I was saying that, um of course, we've talked about this. That digital marketing, like we said, is the marketing of products or services using digital technologies, the internet, social media, or any other digital medium. And um, like we said, it consists of different strategies, different marketing strategies, like social media marketing, email marketing, search engine optimization, and a host of them. And it is driven by data and how best it can be utilized to suit a business marketing goals. I talked about this here. So I'm just doing this for put that. Um, said um, they came in and um, they couldn't. Sorry, um, sorry, I was saying earlier. Breaking. So I can't hear you. Compared to traditional advertising, like billboards, print, digital marketing targets a particular relevant to a business organization and is less expensive. Said. Okay. 
All right. Um, okay, just uh, give me a moment. Let me see if I can sort this out. I don't know. I've tried all the networks I have. Let me try to sort this out. I'll be back. Okay, so sorry everyone. Um, so I think apparently because of the rain, not I think because it's really in both parts of Lagos, so it's actually affecting the network part. So sorry about this. Okay, um, am I back up? Yeah, there's a problem in this country. Uh, uh, so if I please confirm you can hear me from your end. Yes, I can. We can hear you, we can hear you. All right. Okay, so this next this country is there's so much there's there's so much to do in this country. Uh, I don't I don't want to I don't want to talk about it. I have virtually all the network all the network providers from MTN, Glue, Airtel, um, um, uh, Nine Mobile, and I have Spectranet. Spectranet is even their highest plan not the pocket my fire. I had to buy the home broadband plan. And yet, nothing seems to work. Everything is always glitchy. So I'm so sorry about that. Um, I've tried to see how I can, um, I've tried to see how I can um, swap to another network and see if this one will be better. I don't know. I don't know. Um, hopefully, it will be better this time around. Okay. All right. So let's go on. So I was talking about um, compared traditional methods of I'll just stop sharing my screen. So compared to traditional methods of advertising, just like I said, I was talking about earlier, um, digital marketing uh, makes your materials more tailored and more specific. Now, uh, I was saying that before you market online, there are several things that you need to, or several questions that you have to ask yourself. And I started with saying, um, have I tried 5G network? <laughs> I will try 5G, but I will try 5G. 
a time will come when I'll try it. Let me manage the ones I have now. So, um, I've talked about who am I, yeah? Who am I as an organization, as a company, as a brand? The mission, the value of your company, the vision that you have for your company, the reason why your company actually exists or your brand actually exists in the first place. It is very, very important and imperative that you know this stuff while coming online. So you don't end up coming to this online space and trying to do like, or trying to do what everybody else is doing. In as much as we know that the online space is more or less of copy, paste, um, reform. So we know how it is here. It is more or less keeping what your computer is doing. Look at how they are doing it. How the the um, whatever they are putting out is driving them results. Then replicate it into your own business. And when you're replicating it into your own business, you're now um, you're now um, making it original, making it more unique, so that it now sounds like you. It now becomes peculiar to your own brand. Someone is raising up their hand. Techno pop. Techno pop. Your hands are up. Okay, I guess maybe it's a mistake. So now, um, after that, uh, the next question you should ask yourself is what do I offer as a brand? What do I offer? This is where you now define your own unique selling proposition, your own unique selling points that makes you different from your competitors or makes you stand out. Um, every brand or every business has to find a way to stand out or look different from their competitors. It's important that you are different from your competitors. Because that is what will make someone choose or prefer to buy from you than buying from the next person. What is that stuff that, make your, your, that makes your own product unique that will make me not want to buy from the other person? That is where you ask, and answer that question, what do I have to offer? Are you coming into the market to offer the same thing that everybody else offers? Your unique selling proposition does not necessarily mean that uh, um, it has to be from the product. It might be that it is your delivery. It might be that it's your delivery. Others are offering um, delivery in three days and you're offering delivery within 24 hours. Really, that is your own. By the time you're able to service two people, three people, four people, and you deliver within 24 hours promptly, maybe you have a stated time and you say, okay, if you order between now and uh, um, say, uh, if you order between 6 a.m. in the morning, if you place an order between 5 a.m. in the morning, to 8 a.m. or 9 a.m., you get your product delivered to you that same day. And you're able to stick to this. One person places another, you, you get it delivered within 24 hours. Second person within 24 hours. Third person within 24 hours. Fourth person within 24 hours. You've already started carving a niche for yourself because they'll be like, oh, wow, a brand promised me that if I get my product ordered between this time to this time, I'll get it delivered in 24 hours. They kept to their own end of the bargain, placing their order by that time. Some of them might did they want to test you, and then you delivered promptly. That has made you unique because they must have tried other people in the market, and these people are delivering to them in the next three days, sometimes in the next, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes in the next one week. Sometimes they have to even beg to get their own products that they placed another for. And then you're giving them same-day delivery. They will definitely want to buy more from you. 
and they will they will now become ambassadors of your brand that you don't have to pay for. That is another big advantage of having a unique selling point that makes you unique. You begin to build um, ambassadors for your brand that you don't have to pay for it. They begin to do word of mouth advertisement for you. They begin to refer people to you without you having to beg them to refer people because they enjoyed your service. They enjoyed the promise that you gave to them. And they will now go on. on to tell anybody that gets to list it. Omar, I buy so so and so thing from belief, but then deliver on that same day. I shock. And before you know it, you're not having advocates for your brand. You're not having people who are advocating for your brand. They will tell one person. The one person decides to come and try. The person try. The person tries, and the, you get it delivered. <laughs> you will start giving you mentions, free mentions. I'm sure you have gone on on the internet. Most of us must have seen it. You see somebody make a post. Um, please, where can I buy? Um, I, I, I'm located in such and so location. Where can I buy this stuff and get it today? Please, it's urgent. You see one random fellow who just type under the comments at and then they mention your brand. You see how you've been able to um, um, carve a, a, a niche of someone or people who are now advocating for your brand without you having to beg them to do so, without you having to say, oh, I don't have good friends that are always posting my brand. So that might be your own unique selling proposition. Your own unique selling point might be that your price differs from other people's price, but your, your quality still remains the same. Your own might still be, um, um, you give more quantity. Why not still, uh, why still not um, downplaying on quality? It's all the same. You just have to be unique. You have to find out what makes your brand unique. It might be any of these things. It might be not any of these things either too. But you just have to find out, okay, what is my brand? What, what is making my brand unique? What is making me stand out from other brands in the market? It matters a lot. It's very, very, very important. Now, the next question that you need to ask and answer is, where am I in the market? Where am I? You now have to do an analysis of your niche, analysis of your competitors. It's important that you know where you are in the market. It allows you to know uh, what kind of... Um, what uh, kind of materials you want to be putting out and what stage or what level you are in the market. So where are you in the market? You now know this market that I'm entering now, at what stage am I? What level am I? You now understand your competitors. You know what they are using. You understand how they are communicating with your audience. Is imperative that you know that as well. Then you now have to also ask yourself again, why am I going online? Am I just going there because everybody's there? Or am I going there to satisfy my audience? Because the truth is, whatever you're doing online, you're doing it for the audience and not yourself. You're doing it for your target market. Let me try once more if this will allow me to share my screen. I've swapped networks. I don't know what's going on.
Ya. Yeah. Um, I believe you can see my screen now. And I'm uh, clear as well. So, um, yeah, I've talked about what do you offer. I've talked about where are you. Are you understanding your position in the market and that of your competitors? Have an insight what your competitors are doing and trying to do better. So, you look at what the computers are doing try to do better. Uh, I saw. I saw an a, an ad. So that was like edition ad, anyways. I will not call it trying to do better, but it was an ad of oh, noise. Okay, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right. I think this doesn't want me to share my screen today. So it's always breaking the audio and I'm sharing my screen. Okay. So I saw an ad. It was a Pepsi, yes. And I'm sure that I'm, I'm sure of who does it better. So, okay. I don't even know, but I think I have a, a child who walked down to um, one of these booths in, in of course, is is um, not Nigeria, not Africa. You know these booths where they 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 they, they slot in a coin, and um, if you want to buy a drink, as you slot in the coin, it's going to bring out the drink for you downwards. So the boy um, slotted in a coin. And Coca Cola was the first brand down, and Pepsi were up, and his hand couldn't get up. I did not even know that that was what he wanted to do. His hand couldn't get up, Pepsi. He now slotted in a coin, and Coca Cola fell out the first time he took the coin. You've seen the video, I'm sure. He placed it on the ground, he slotted in the coin again. Um, another cook, another, another cook fell out. He took it and placed it on the ground, and then, um, he then climbed on the two cans of Coca Cola just to be able to get to Pepsi, and slotted in the coin to get Pepsi. This is, and <laughs> this is he, he placed the two cans of Coca Cola on the ground and used them like. He lifts to lift himself up to get the Pepsi. Yes, it, it might be a violence act. It's violence from Pepsi to Coca Cola. But they are sending a message that they are better than Coca Cola. That's what they are trying to tell you that they are better than Coca Cola. Right? And I'm sure it's going to be a competition. I'm sure Coca Cola must have done something like that. I'm sure they have done something like that before. I, I was uh, wondering if they won't get sued. I'm sure before they did that, they have done they have done their their due diligence and due consideration. But that was more like um uh, trying to tell you uh, our product is better than this particular product. But you see, the thing is that those two people, Coca-Cola and Pepsi, have have they have a very competitive market. They have similar products. And the market has been so competitive between the both of them. And everyone has their preference. Some people will prefer Coke. Some people will prefer um, um, Pepsi. And they are both unique in their own ways. Why? They both have different tastes. If you taste Pepsi, you will know that yeah, um, ah, Coca-Cola has bought Pepsi. Oh, wow. Mm. I didn't know. I'm hearing this for the first time. <laughs> if you taste Pepsi, you will know that you have tasted Pepsi. And if you taste Coke, you know that you have tasted Coke. 
they are both unique. Now there are other brands that are coming into the picture, like the likes of Biggie and they bought Jivit and not Pepsi. Yeah, I thought as much. I don't think they can really buy Pepsi. Uh yes, you get the class recording data. So that's more like a competitor. But what I, I want you to take out of this is what I want to take out of this is that they know themselves and they are always listening to each other to know what this one is doing to be able to do it better. It's a very healthy competition, honestly. I'm very sure that both the directors and MDs of the both companies know themselves. They get where they meet, they will sit down, they will shake hands, they will eat and they will drink together, but they are still in business and it's a competitive business. I'll tell you just one thing. And one thing I'm going to say is this. There's this saying that people used to say, um, I'm not competing with anybody. I'm competing with only myself. I have to be... It's true that you go, you have to you don't you don't have to compete with anybody but the truth is that in this life it is a competition we are all competing against ourselves one way or the other where it becomes bad is when it becomes unhealthy competition but there is always competition take it or leave it they say it's a dog eat dog world so if you're not if you cannot keep up if you cannot meet up you have to go home so it's a competitive world. Everyone is competing. There is always competition everywhere. Starting from, from, from nursery school, from when we were kids, there has been competition. In, the, in school, people are competing to, to get to become top of the class. You come out from school in the real business world, businesses are competing to become to be on the top chain so that they can satisfy more people. Everyone is competing. So you have to bear that in mind that you are competing against the other person. Where it becomes bad is when it becomes unhealthy. Unhealthy in the sense that you are now taking it the other way. You're now planning evil against the first scene. You're now um, bearing grudges and all of that. But once you still try to keep it on a level playing field, this person is doing this today. Messi and Ronaldo were able to hold the world for a standstill for no good, no, over 20 years plus. Since now, because there have been competition between the both of them. If Ronaldo does good this year, Messi will go back and try to meet up to come out top. If Messi goes, does it one, two, three, Ronaldo looks as if he's sleeping, he goes back and tries to come up to become the top. It is it is normal. There is competition. So you have to keep up. If you don't keep up, you'll be swallowed up. The world is a world of survival. So you have to strive to survive. So you have to understand that the competitors are there. And your competitors are ensuring that they become better than you. So if you're saying you're competing with only yourself, it means you are doing something against yourself or you're trying to beat yourself right and your competitors are, are not they're not looking at that one they are doing their own and they are looking at you looking at what you're doing and when you do it today and it seems as if uh, you are doing something better than them they will go back to their drawing board and try to raise up their bar and you'll be there so you have to understand that the life is about competitors so you have to understand where you are in the market. Who are my competitors in this market? What are they doing in this market that I am entering? Whether you're just entering or whether you've been there before. Some of us, I don't know if we've ever done competitive analysis to look at the to look at the competitors and know what they are doing. You have to look at them. Oh, what are they doing? What have they been doing that have not been doing good? Look at brands that are in your niche. What have they been doing that have not been doing? What is the thing that they did that they did not do? What do I have to do to be able to get up to their level or even surpass their level? Because that's the only way you're going to make or drive more sales than the competitors. There are three competitors categories, of course. There are direct competitors, there are niche competitors, and then there are substitute products. Direct competitors are people who are offering the same type of service, the same type of thing that you are doing. 
they are doing the same thing. Niche competitors are uh is a niche you have this particular niche of business that you're doing they are not offering the same services that's the same thing but they are in that niche so people can actually use them as well and then substitute products are if they don't use your product they can use it they can use this other person's own for uh um substitute products now for substitute let, let me use an example what would i have substitute um let's use the banks um if we don't bank if you don't bank with um okay let me just use bank for all of them the bank now we have um the direct competitors like we have access bank we have zenith bank we have um um access zenith um the likes of them stambic ibtc they are all direct competitors. They are all direct competitors. Now, niche competitors are like the likes of Kuda, the likes of OP, the likes of Pampe, who have come into the, the same guy, the same niche. They are not exactly like the um, they're not exactly like the the exactly, yeah. Example of Pepsi and Biggie, then Mr. Biju and Seaway. They are all in the same niche. Yes, but not direct. Thank you for this example. Now, Pepsi and Biggie Cola or Pepsi and Coca-Cola, they are direct competitors, right? They are offering the same, the same type of products. Then in that niche of um, beverages, we now have the Vidu and the Seaway. Not exactly the same thing, right? Not exactly the same thing, but they are in that niche. Then we have the substitute product. Substitute product means if we don't use any of these things, we can use this, for instance, I don't want to drink beverages. I don't want to take any of the beverages. And I decide to want to take a substitute, but I want to take tea. Now for the bank, we say we don't want to use any of the um, um, niches. We don't want to use the access banks and the likes of them. We don't want to use the um, Pampi and those of them. I want to save my money in saving box. That's a substitute. I want to save my money giving this uh, this akawo abi susu abi what do they call them? This people that um, go um, to market women and all of those people to ask them to put their money and then at the end of the month they give it to them. That is a substitute product. So you have to understand that in your every market they have these competitors and you have to pay attention to them and what they are doing. All right, I've talked about that now. Now, also talk about why you have to go online because we have to establish why you're coming online. You have to know why am I coming online? What am I coming online to do? What am I coming online to do? Establish your key points indicators. What are the things you want to achieve online? So you have to know it. Then who is my client? It's important that you know your client. Who is my client? By knowing your target audience, <laughs> you, that is how you know your clients. That is how you know who you're supposed to be targeting. Everybody is not your customer. Everybody is not your customer. Doesn't matter what you're selling. Everyone is not your customer. So you have to know the target audience specifics to be able to find out what they are. That is where we have what they call a buyer persona. Where we do what we call a buyer personnel. The buyer personnel, we know the audience traits. Right? First of all, knowing about their demography, their name, you, you can use it as a portrait. I'm going to send a sample. You guys, it as a portrait. You can do an imaginary portrait of your audience. But first, the most important thing is you need to know their name, know their agenda. Let's forget name now. You need to know the gender, the interests, where they live the age range, their geographic location, of course, what devices do they use? What is their interest? What do they like? What do they not like? What are their challenges? And then how can you solve your problem?
But I personally help you to know who your target audience are. You can do the client. If you have a product that you're targeting, um, that you're targeting um, different uh, age grade. Oh, I'll do this quick. Okay, yeah. No way, no way. Sorry, call came in. Call came in. It's going to be stable now. Yeah, all right. So if you know, uh, if you have the target audience, you're going to know um, who they are through the buyer persona. The buyer persona helps you to have a, a picture of your audience. So you know whatever you're putting out, the, the people that you are supposed to be targeting. That's why you need to know their age range. You need to know their gender. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming again. You need to know their age, their age range. You need to know their gender. You need to know... Uh, uh, Sometimes you don't have to know as, as much as their um, education level. You need to know their geographic location. You need to know their interests. What are the things that they like when they come online? What are the, what are the things that interest them generally? What are their behaviors like? What is their challenges? What are their challenges? What challenges are they passing through? And how can your product help them solve those challenges? Is important. It's very, very important that you know all of this stuff to be able to market online. Um, let me see if I can find. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'll send it now. But uh, let me see. I think I have a sample of it. My screen will not be to share. That's my problem. Okay. Yep. So, um, this is an example. This might not cover all, but um, hopefully my screen will share. Let me see. <sighs> He shares though. I hope he shares. So I send him this. I, I use this as a sample. I'll send it to them. Don't worry. So please, um, you can see my screen, right? Yes, I'm sure you can. Um, let me just rush to it. So this is an example of a buyer persona. This is from Google. This is one of your Google posts. This is what it looks like. You can see the age. There's an age. This one is more like the one where they do an imaginary portrait of the person. Okay, this is the age. This is the age. Sometimes it can be between age range. You can decide to say 20 to 25, 20 to 30. It depends on the target audience that um depends on the target audience that you're 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 going for. Okay, you can see education. Now you only you need to know all of this valuable information. You can say education, so you know the the um the education level of the people you are targeting because it will also determine. Everybody is online, and everybody is not at the same level or understanding level of 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 stuffs online. So you need to know what is the education level of the people that are targeting online as well. It will determine what you are putting. So you don't go and put maybe your your target maybe even if maybe you have um, a mix a mix of a mix of both um, yeah, people who are well educated and maybe people who are not so well educated. You don't got to start putting stuff that are going to be understand understood by only people who are who have a very high level of education. Now their geographic location. This is this is they now put this hometown. You can just make it location. 
can be Lagos. So you know the city because people in different cities have different behaviors. The way people in Lagos perceive and take on, take on to things is not the same way people in Portacourt take on to things. It's not the same way people in Kaduna or in the or in the north or people in the in the south south or people in the southeast take or perceive things. It's not the same way they they they, they um, understand things. Because of a geographic location, everybody has different means of understanding. You also have to know, of course, their family. If they are single people, if they are married people, for instance, you're selling, uh, let's say someone is selling um, um, products for children. Um, you're selling products for children. Say so you're selling products for children under, under, under five years old, from five years below. You know that um, you're targeting um, um, people within the age range of that's early married couples, right? Or couples who just bear all those poor children, who are just having children. So um, the age range might be between, uh, I don't know what, let's say between 25 or less, less um, women get married early these days, so say 23 or they are about. So between 23 to, let's say, um, 35, 40, that, that depends. I mean, it should be at your own discretion. And then the education level, of course, and then, uh, of course, if it's both the fathers and the mothers you're targeting, or if it's both the mothers, you find a way to indicate it. The geographic location, where are they located, who you're targeting, it should also be where your business covers. If you're going to be offering delivery, it should also be where your business covers, where you know you can actually offer. Five, seven, seven, five, five, five. Should be, okay, please, um, that person should be here to place. It should be where you know you can actually offer your delivery services or where you know that your business can actually reach these people. So if you're in Lagos, you know that, okay, I'm going to be offering these services to people in Lagos. If it's even just a particular location in Lagos or within a particular vicinity in Lagos, you know you cannot go beyond that. You say, okay, uh, between this place to this place, that is where I want to be targeting. These are the people I want to meet. Then, what else? Uh, yeah. Then their family. You know, if they have, if they are married people, if they are single, they have children. How many kids do they have? You can indicate it there. You can say married, four children. You can say single. Single already, everybody knows no kids. You can be single, mother, two kids, just like that. Depends on who you're targeting. Then the occupation, students, banker, teacher, whatever. These are very important. Okay. Uh, this one doesn't really tailor down to their interest. There's no interest in this, but um, you can take the specifics. Now, frustrations being the challenges. So from this buyer persona here, right? Um, this person says, uh, I love I love trying new types of food instead of cooking myself to be a better person. All right, fine. Let's just read the person's frustration. It's annoying when people won't take time to let me find the words to speak with them in English. Lack of translation help is sometimes overwhelming or requires too much time from me. So from this statement, if we go down here to read now, we are going to see that Dostan is a recent immigrant to the United States. Now, it's a bit far-fetched, but I want to use it to drive up point. Jordan, Jordan is a recent immigrant to the United States who is partially conversant in English. They are able to speak many phrases and read well when given adequate time to translate text. Children sometimes encounter difficulty at restaurants where staff tends to speak very quickly and limited translation options are available. Children wants to experience all new food and experiences the neighborhood has to offer. Now, from this person, I can deduce that this person, his name is Judah, he's a 19 year old and he's an immigrant to the United States. It means he's coming in from another country that they don't speak English into the United States. And 
He's partially conversant in English, so his English is not strong. He's able to just make phrases, you know, one one words, because he can't make fully good sentences. And he only needs enough time. So he needs a lot of time to be able to translate text. He's also a person that loves food. He loves new kind of foods. And he doesn't like cooking it himself from this stuff here. He likes to try these types of food outside. So let's say in restaurants. And he encounters the difficulty because he cannot speak English. He goes into a restaurant full of Americans or whites, and they are all speaking English, right? He 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 just he gets frustrated because they are talking too fast and he doesn't have the time to make out what they are saying. They don't give him enough time to find the words to speak with them in English. He explains all this very cool. These are his goals. He wants to explain at work. He wants to explain. He wants to raise his brother while helping his mother at work. He wants time to focus on his study. So he's a student. He has his mother and a younger sibling. So his mother goes to work. So he's the one that takes care of his younger sibling. You see how this covers the person's the bad persona. It shows both their character and who they are. This is more like a little bit broad, but this is um audio is too fast. Okay, let me slow down. So look at his goals. His goal is to experience all the great food that his new diverse community has to offer. Now, he has come into a new location, a new community altogether, a new environment. He has the goal of experiencing new food because he likes to try out food, right? And he also wants to help his mother raise the brother while she's at work. And he still needs time to focus on his studies. So you see that, one, his problem here now is he wants to be able to communicate swiftly in English. To so, uh, communicate swiftly in English, right? To so speak English fluently. And for the other people to be able to understand them. Then he loves new foods. But he doesn't have time to cook the foods because he needs to focus on his studies. He needs to also try to take care of his brother while his mother is at work. And yet he wants to experience this new food and he doesn't like to cook, so he prefers to go to a restaurant. What is he looking for now? He's looking for a solution that will help him be able to um, converse in English with these people, with these people in this restaurant without having issues. And he doesn't want something that's going to take him a lot of time. And this is just an example. Now, if you have a business, for instance, you see you're selling um you're selling what is it yes clothes no. let's say you're selling clothes right you now put the age range of people that you feel will buy your clothes you put the education level of people that you think will get your clothes you put the hometown okay i think i have a singular one from somebody that did recently. You put the hometown of people that, uh, or the not hometown, sorry, this hometown makes it a bit more. The location where your target audience are, if they are family, their occupation, the family sometimes if they don't have, you can just take it off. Then the occupation, right? And then you look at their interest. What are they interested in? Let me look for another person for you. But I'm going to send this one, so you're also going to use it as a reference. I'll send it. I'll give it to, I'll send it to Sifa, and then she'll probably send it out to the group or to where um, she can send it to you guys. But let me look for another one that is quite simple that we can also understand again. Let me, let me look for that one. Okay. 
Just give me a second. I need to look for this stuff right now. First one. So just um hold on, let me just um check for it. I can't find it now, but oh, I have another one here. Um, I don't want us to waste too much time. Now, this is another one. Let me share my screen. On this one, so it's quite small. I'll zoom in so you see it. All right, so now let's look at this one. This one is a bit more different, but it's almost the same thing. They are stimulated. Rule. Healthcare decision maker, age 30 to 50 years old, family, kids under 18. So it means this person is a healthcare decision maker. She's between the ages of 30 to, to 50, and her family, they have kids under 18 years old, family of the target audience. But they use a, a, a particular name because they're trying to make it look like an imaginary figure of or an imaginary portrait of the target market okay it can cover for more than one person but you, you have you know when you do a sample of course when you're doing a sample size you're using um a few to quantify many to understand the habits of many now working mom Wendy. that is what the name is background wendy is a working mom who is balancing her career with raising a family She's an educated on the go woman who uses online resources for just about every aspect of her life from cooking to parenting. Her goal is to keep her family healthy. When someone in her family is ill, she wants quick, convenient, and reliable care. Right? These are her goals. These are her challenges. As her children grow older, she doesn't necessarily have a dedicated primary care physician. And secondly, she's always very busy. So her busy work schedule makes it challenging for her to take her children or to take sick days off so she can take her children to the hospital. Now, this business or the people who are trying to target this audience are, let's say, looks like, to me, it looks like a clinic or a hospital. Now, what do they try to help her do? The other one did not provide how we help, but this provides it. it says we provide online scheduling and same day appointments for quick service. Do you see how they are solving her problem here? Because she has a busy work schedule. So it is challenging for her to take sick days for her or her children. So the only day she has time, she's going to need a service or an online service that provide her with same day appointments and provide the services to her that same day. So you see the problem. Online, please uh, mute your mic, please. The, uh, the distraction is coming from the mic. Please 
please mute your mic. Thank you. All right. So you see that how are they going to help her? You see how this is clearly stated. The other one didn't state it, but this is clearly stated. It says here, we provide online scheduling and same day appointments for quick service because her schedule are busy and it makes it challenging for her to take her sick, her children on sick days. So the only day she maybe has, she wants people that are going to provide her the moment, you know how scheduling for an, appoint an appointment with the doctor is sometimes. You can schedule today and um, you are going to get your appointment maybe next week or maybe midweek. Maybe uh, today is Monday. You can schedule today and now you're going to finally get the appointment to see the doctor on, on, on Friday or so. And she doesn't want that kind of thing because she doesn't have that kind of time. Secondly, they make care easily accessible from work or home with convenient locations. Second, thirdly, they produce online health resources. Now, she's a busy mom. She doesn't have time. She doesn't also have a dedicated primary care physician. That means no particular doctor or hospital or case healthcare is able to take care of her kids. So she needs something that is going to be easily accessible to her from work or home. Now, it's more or less like, you know, when you have a dedicated physician or a dedicated doctor, you know, it's going to be accessible to you whenever you need them. But this one now, since she doesn't have, these people are going to be providing her with an easily accessible one from work or home where she can stay anywhere and place an appointment with them and meet them at a convenient location. And then produce online health resources. So she might not always also have the time to be able to book an appointment or come down to their location. So they're also going to provide online health resources that she can quickly go through and make a quick fix on maybe very simple matters that she can actually take care of for her children from her end with their resources instead of running down to the clinic or running down to the hospital. Poor audio. Okay, let me, let me go again. I don't know where we stopped. Our busy work schedule. Now, saying this gets in the business by targeting this particular audience. Now, um, the people that are targeting this particular audience now, they are providing online scheduling and same day appointments for quick service because her challenges one are she has a busy schedule, so she needs something that. If she books today, if she books an appointment today, she will get an appointment that same day. And she will get the services delivered that same day. Because she doesn't have the time to go and come back tomorrow. This is this alone makes them unique. This alone is a unique selling proposition. Because it is rare to book an appointment with a doctor or a hospital today and get an appointment that same day, except it's an emergency. But these guys are saying, provide an online scheduling and same day appointment for quick service. So they are going to provide an online, uh, an online scheduling and same day appointment for her. And she will go in with her kids if they are sick on the day that she has the time, book an appointment that day, go in that day, get the services that day, and go home. Two, they will make care easily accessible from work or home with convenient locations. How? How? She has a busy work schedule and she doesn't have a dedicated primary care physician. She doesn't have a dedicated family doctor to take care of her children. All right. So 
a having a family doctor or having a um uh, a family um dedicated care physician will make it easily for easy for our children to just oh she book she calls the person or oh, please them to you today they are coming down to you so it's convenient right but now she doesn't have any or this particular sect of people and i know that there are so many of people in the society that do not have dedicated primary care doctors i do not have maybe family doctors do not have this kind of sort of people to take care of their them when they are when they are ill right so this brand are saying they will make care easily accessible from work or home With convenient locations. It means she can book an appointment from work, she can book an appointment from home, and the location is going to be my easily. This might mean it might be the have convenient locations where she can book online health resources. Now, if you're saying they are producing online health resources, why are they producing online health resources? She is a busy person. Let's go back to the challenges. You see, I'm I'm trying to make sure I align the challenges with how they are going to solve the problem so that it makes it easy for you to understand. So it makes it easy for us to understand, right? Now, she's saying that her busy work schedule yeah, makes it challenging for her to take sick days off for her children, right? So it's going to be difficult. And now they are saying they will produce online health resources. Why are they producing online health resources? There are certain ailments or certain um, sicknesses that might just need a quick fix, right? Certain sicknesses that she doesn't need to necessarily run down to the hospital to get um, appointments with a doctor, okay? Now, Instead of her to start, maybe she doesn't know how to, she doesn't want to abuse drugs by prescribing on her own and all those type, type of stuff. And she doesn't also have the time to go to a doctor. These health resources online can help us see this is the, the symptom of that thing that your child is going through or you are going through. These are kind of drugs that you can use, or this is the kind of thing that you can use to be able to um, manage the situation or even solve it. So you see that providing an online health resource also works for this person. So you see how this particular brand or this particular business have known their target markets, right? They know that this is the person that we are targeting. This is the profile of the person that we are targeting. And these are the challenges that this person has. Oh, my neighbors. Oh, Wendy is my ID client at Preggy. Oh, wow. Okay. That's nice. So I'm going to be sharing this. Um, I'm going to be sharing this via uh, personas with you guys, right? Um, so uh, you can see, of course, her goals are still there. Let's not forget her goals. I, I didn't skip it. Let's not be as if I skipped it. The goals are still very important. What are the goals of this person? Because the goals will also determine... Because your solution that you're offering them is to help them reach their goals, right? You're offering a solution to someone because let's say if someone, someone is sick, if I'm sick, my goal is like me now, I, 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 like I'm fine, I said, like I told you I'm not feeling too healthy, so I'm not feeling too, too fine, right? My goal is to become healthy again because I have a lot of work to do. So if you're offering me a solution, your solution has to help me achieve my goal. How? To make me... Her goals are to keep her family healthy. And when someone is a family is ill, she wants quick, convenient, and reliable care. So these are her goals. To keep her family healthy and to also... Um, when someone is ill, she wants quick, convenient, and reliable care. Those are her goals. 
and she has challenges that are in her from reaching those goals. And then this is how they help her to solve that particular problem. There's a particular person that one of my students did, one of my students made. It was top notch. I, I, I read it last week and I, I loved it. And um, um, I, that was what I was trying to look for. Let me see if I can find it. I'm still trying to look for it. If I find it, I'll show you guys. Uh, it's more because it's more Nigerian. These ones are foreign, right? So I wanted to bring something that drives home. Uh, can't find it now, man. If I find it, I should be able to see it. I can't it out of the system. So I'm going to look for it now and I'm going to see it. Like I closed it yesterday. Just, just give me a few seconds. I'll find it. So I want us to focus on what is more important. And these are the things that are, yeah, thank God. These are the things that are very much important, right? These are very much important because if you don't know your target audience, yeah, if you cannot tailor them down, you just end up um uh just end up pushing um stuff to the wrong people. And you will not also know what pain points to touch that are really going to drive down the message to yeah. your target audience very well. Yeah, so this is loading, this is loading. Let me read this. I think this should be it. Yeah, look, yeah, I've seen it. So let me share my screen. Uh, let me share my screen. Let's see. Yes, this is it. This is one of it. It's not that person, but it's something. I can't remember that person, but this is one I remember. So, uh, my screen is sharing, right? Yes, it's sharing. So you can see the name. She calls this person money for lacquer. So this is for a jewelry store, an online jewelry brand, right? And says this person's name is money for lacquer. And the age range is between 30 to 50 years old. And the education level is that this person or this set of people are work certificate holders to undergraduate degree people. They are business or is a business woman. Let me not use the it's a business woman. What are the key identifiers now? This is how she did that. Everybody has there are different ways to do it. There's no laid down of some principle. Person is family oriented. She's a business woman. She's interested in fashion and style, and she likes to shop online. So she's family oriented. She has a family. She wants to take care of her family. She's still a business woman. She's interested in fashion and style, and she likes to shop online. Background. Mommy Folake is a businesswoman married to a man who comes from a large Yoruba family. As usual in Yoruba homes, Mommy Folake always has big parties to attend, and her husband always wants her to look her best at these parties. I hope this is more relatable. Her goals. She wants to be a good wife and mother. She wants to improve her looks and fashion style, and she still wants to excel at her business. Now, I'm sure we know that um, uh, most of our homes, they are all the parties most times, and this person wants to always be her best when she's attending parties, right? Now, her challenges. Because of the nature of her business, Mommy Folake does not have the time 
to go to the market to get jewelries for her parties. And her husband has insisted that she wears new ones every time they have a family gathering. Now, this reminded me of a particular neighbor of mine when I was much younger. When I was much younger, there's this particular neighbor, this woman that we had, that they lived um, opposite us, directly opposite us, right? Um, this woman did not used to go to church except she has a new clothes. So any Sunday that she has new clothes, that Sunday she will go to church. That Sunday they wake up as early as 4.30, 5 a.m. and they will start disturbing the whole neighborhood. And then any Sunday that you do not hear her wake up early in the morning, just know that that Sunday she doesn't have new clothes. So she's not going to church. That was just what this reminded me of. But that aside, right? So because of the nature of her business, she does not have time to go to the market to get jewelries for her parties. And her husband has insisted that she wears new clothes every time they have a family gathering. The husband does not want her to be repeating clothes. She has tried going to the market to get jewelry, but always gets fake ones that either spoil or fade off. So these are challenges, right? And this is one challenge with jewelry markets. Mommy Folake always also has a hard time finding out what jewelry will fit her outfits. And she has got and she has caught her co-wives jeering at her once that she paired good earrings with a silver necklace. So she might need help finding the right jewelry too. So she tailored this down very well. Very, very well. And I actually enjoyed reading this. Now, how does her business help her as an online jewelry store, right? One, our online jewelry store sells the best quality jewelry and allows customers to shop from the comfort of their homes. So, Mommy Folake would not need to leave her shop to go to the market to buy the jewelry. That is one. Two, our customer attendance also help by offering consultation on the right jewelry to wear on the right occasion with the right outfit. Mm -hmm. And then three, our online store has a six-month warranty. Now, you see how this is unique? This is where the unique business is. If Mumi Fulake is worried that the jewelry might fade off, she can get them. And if they fade within six months, she can then return them. You see how this... There's noise from the background. Whose mic is on? Okay, so that's better. Now. Please, please mute your mic. Whose mic is on? Uh, please mute your mic, all right? Thank you. Um, this has not seen anything. Let me look for the person. Okay. I'll turn this person from my mind. Yes, yes. Her online store covers all. I've muted the person, don't worry. Uh, her online store covers all women for like challenges. Thank you. That is it. You see how it is. You see that. So if you if you look at this expressly. Right, because of the nature of mom for like business, she doesn't have time to go to the and the also says that she must be in the world. So this store gives her the best quality jewelries, and she does not have to come shopping to the shop. Yeah. To come to um helps her to shop. Our life store helps her to shop and she doesn't have to come to the 
shop physically, right? Always show rather not Secondly, she offers consultation. The red on the Okay, mm -hmm. I got thrown out there again. I got to start up. Start up, start up, start up, start up. Yep. Um, so I was saying, uh, I was on the last one, right? And I was saying that. Excuse me. I was saying that the online store has a six month warranty. Team might feed off, right? She can get them, and within six months, she can return them if she if they are going to feed off or if she feels they are going to feed off. So you see that this alone is position. Give her the confidence to want to buy, right? To want to buy because she knows that she might be able to return them if they fade off because that is one of her fear of her target audience. She knows the expectations that the person is trying to meet. She knows the fears that the person has and she tries as much as possible to use her online jewelry store to be able to target all of this. So this is what it looks like, right? This is where you have to be able to, this is where you know you do the bulk of your work to be able to know who your target audience are. One of my students did a fat, um, for fat, uh, plus size women, let me not say fat, for plus size, I can't find it now because it's going to be difficult for me to find, right? But she did for plus size women, and I like it. Because there were certain things that I felt like if she added it, they were going to make it more about plus size women is that they have um, um, low self-esteem, right? And if you're offering um, a plus size woman um, something or you're offering her an environment where uh, she doesn't have to care about her self-esteem, she doesn't have to care about people laughing at their society, she's offering her a place where if she walks in, she sees women who are just like her, she's going to be more comfortable to shop from you. So I, I, that was then, that was on that one, but I don't think I can find it now, but I'm just trying to use this, right? So you have to do your buyer persona to be able to know who your target audience are so you can be able to reach them. It is important that you know who your target audience are to be able to reach them. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now, right? I'm going to share, um, you show this later on. So you have to do that. It's important that you do it so you can know who your target audience Ah, um, let me see, sharing my screen again. Uh, let's 
I've talked about why do I have to market online, right? And who's your target audience? This is just to just finish now. Now, we talk about this. The stages of marketing online. I'm sure we can say this, right? We have the C stage. We have the think stage. We have, you see, these stages, you see how is a funnel. If you look at it, it's a funnel. So it is coming from up to down. We have what we call a marketing funnel. This is more like it, right? But this is in a more different perspective. Because if you want to even look at it the normal way, let me even explain it in a very simple way. The C stage is where people see your, um, is where people see your product or your service. They see what you're offering them, right? People see what you're saying. And at that stage, a lot of people are going to see what you're offering. Because you're shooting out stuff and they are getting to so many people, right? So many people are going to see it. But even if you have a very direct target audience, your target audience are going to see it. But people who are not necessarily your target audience are still going to see it. And then we have the think stage. The think stage is where they begin to think about, um, they begin to think about this stuff that you have put out. Right? And that point, you see how it comes down. The number of people that saw it, what you put out, and the number of people that begin to think about what you've put, you've put out, begin to have the thought of wanting to try out your product or your service, it reduces. That's the truth. It reduces. But you still have to keep being consistent by still um, uh, putting out something. Constant communication, right? Because the more they continue, these people who are thinking about take, uh, using your product or your service, the more they continue to see stuff that you're putting out, the more they continue to see, um, yeah, the more they continue to see the things you're putting out, the more they will continue to think about you, right? And then we have the do. The do is now where they decide to take action. At that point, they are trying to take an action. They want to buy. So they have to be able to find you. You don't have to be difficult for them to find, right? And then we have the care stage. The care stage is after they have bought from you, how do you treat them? Do you throw them away or do you care for them? How do you care for them? Do you communicate? Do you try to find out the product that they have bought, how best they are using it? Has it served them? Has it fulfilled the goal and the purpose at which they bought it from you? The care stage is very important, yes. Do they, do, 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 does it satisfy them? Because it is easy, it is easy to sell to an already existing customer or somebody, or somebody who has bought from you before than to sell to an entirely new person. Take note of this, it's very important. It is easy to sell to somebody that has bought from you before than to start selling from scratch to a new person. Because selling to a new person, you have to start all over again. You have to start the whole work afresh again, trying to acquire a new customer. Cost of customer acquisition is quite expensive. If you run ads, you have to run ads again. From running of ads, you have to um, continue to post out stuff. Of course, posting out creatives. If you're not doing the designs yourself, designer, if you're doing videos, okay, maybe you do the videos yourself. It's better for you. But then you're going to, use it. it might not take money, but it might take energy and time again. Yes, you get the slide, please. You take energy and time. So you see that uh, starting all over again and starting afresh is difficult. Again, 
But selling to someone who has already bought from you is going to be easy because this person already trusts you. This person already has bought from you before. This person already knows, oh, wow, I've trusted this brand so I can trust them again. And this person can refer new customers to you. So you see why this care stage is very, very important. How do you care for them? How do you find out about them? How do you know if the, the product is doing well? If they have any complaints, how do you cater for that complaint? If maybe the product um, maybe got bad in the process, how do you handle um, um, that kind of case? Do you tell them, uh, you have bought it, or you have bought it, or uh, we cannot give you a, a new one? Or you cannot, you, maybe it's a product that you can, maybe you say, okay, uh, do you tell them, okay, um, um, can I, uh, uh, can you bring it so that we can see how we can fix it? If it's, if it's something we cannot um, fix, we give you a new one. The truth is that it's a business. In as much as you cannot satisfy all your customers, you have to trust them as possible to keep them happy. And sometimes keeping them happy means you might run a loss. And nobody wants to run a loss in business. I understand perfectly, right? But one customer is very important in your business. One customer is very, very important in a business. Okay. So you have to try as much as possible to satisfy them. I know that you cannot satisfy everybody. There are some people that there are some people that um there are some people that they have um, certain kind of egos and certain kind of problem that their own is not is not um it's not ordinary that can solve it. Yeah, there are people that have issues. They have their own issues, right? But you have to understand that they are your customers. And you have to try as much as possible to be able to keep them satisfied because they are the reason that you are in business. So you have to care for them. That stage, that care stage is very, 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 very important. The C stage is there where you have to put out stuff. That time, people are trying to know you. That's when they are just becoming aware <laughs> of customers are searchable. You are very correct. That's when you're, they are, you are trying to build your brand awareness. You're trying to get in the faces of your customers. They're trying to see if they can just, they can be able to pick you out, see you everywhere they go. And the good thing about the whole internet and the whole algorithm now, social media algorithm, especially the the social media algorithm as a whole, meta algorithm is crazy. Is 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 so their AI system is so good that so good that if someone um checks out your stuff, your stuff today, spend some time watching, maybe you put out a creative, you put out a video about your product, or you put out an informative video or something like that, the algorithm immediately ramps it in such a way that it begins to show that content to some to that person consistently or to people that have that same characteristics in such a way that because the algorithm now sees that oh wow this person likes this thing okay so the possibility that this person is going to like more of this then we have to put it to the person's face so the 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 whole social media algorithm already even helps you out the whole social media algorithm already helps you out so at that C stage, while you're trying to put out good contents that will make people see your brand, right? While you're trying to put out good contents that will make them see you, of course, social media algorithm is also going to help you out there by putting it to the faces of people. And ensure that whatever you're putting out is quality enough that will make them think about your brand. How, why would they think about it? You have touched their pain points. You have, you have a solution to their problem. So they will definitely want to think of you as a solution to their problem. And then when they want to take action, make sure that you are available. Not when they send a message, you're not available to reply the message, right? Not when they send a message, you're not available to reply. Or you reply after how many hours? So once they are able to take the action, then you care stage, you begin to care for them. And always put a call to action in whatever you're putting out. Always put a call to action in whatever you're putting out. If you're putting out this thing today, then you, you should have a call to action. So the call to action should be able to drag them to be able to take an action on your brand. But let's leave that aside. Now let's go down. 
that's digital marketing sorry of course these are them social media marketing email marketing content marketing paper click search engine optimization video marketing influencer marketing these are all types of digital marketing strategies there are even more than this but for this purpose of this class we'll just focus on mostly social media marketing and uh yeah i think that's what we're focusing on because that's where that is what drives more these days, right? Now, what is social media marketing? It involves using social networks to build brand awareness, increase conversions, drive traffic. It uses social media apps, right? So we are using social networks. What are the social networks? Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Pinterest, TikTok, Snapchat. There are many. There are, there are many. There are many. Okay. So they have various social media platforms. And social media marketing involving the, using these social media networks to build your brand awareness, to increase your conversion, and to drive traffic. The goal of business is to drive return on investment. Everybody is in business to make money. So you coming onto social media, you're also coming there to make money. So what you're putting out, your goal there is to ensure that whatever you're putting out is going to bring back return on investment. Whatever you're putting out, <clears throat> you're going to make money. Right? Now, Social media marketing goes like I said here yeah, involves one increasing brand awareness. Increasing brand awareness in the sense that people are going to know about your brand. Right. Um the likes of the big brands, now let's use the big brands, the likes of the Coca-Cola, the um Pepsi, the likes. Uh, market. The question is why? They already have enough brand awareness. You will see people know them already. They are popular. So why are they doing this? Because they still need to be at the mind of their audience. You see the way the life works. It's normal in life. The moment you stop being so available in people's faces, they begin to forget you, like it or not. So that is why these brands pay a lot of attention and spend a lot of money on running ads. Sometimes they run these ads. Sometimes they run this, they do, um, they spend money even on, um, what they call it now, they spend money even on um, traditional measures of advertisement, right? Doing billboards because they still want to be in the mind of people. They do campaigns online. They do social media campaigns. They do social media, they do challenges. All of those things are to continue to increase their brand awareness. They already have big markets. They have the large market, but they understand that they have a competition. And the moment they slack, they will be thrown out of the market. Most of these brands care more about visibility than any other person. I'm telling you for a fact. I have done a few, not many, yeah? I have done a few, uh, I've been with a few um, people that do PR and communications, right? And if you're going to um, appeal to some of these brands for uh, maybe support, whatever, um, financial support, sponsorship, and all of that. What they are more interested in, what their managers are more interested in, what their people are more interested in is, what is the visibility that your show, your program, your platform is going to give to them? And that is brand awareness. Now, what is the visibility that you are going to give to them? They prefer it over any other thing. That's visibility. So they, will, they are ready to give you any amount of money, 2 million, 3 million, so for them to have their 
um they are they will still be the ones to cater for all of those materials their brand materials brand printing if it's billboard if it's stickers if it's boots where they want their people to stand if it's t-shirts if it's scrolling advert whatever they will still be the ones to cater for it but they just want to be peaceable because they want people to continue to see their brand in their faces and that is what social media marketing helps you as a business that is not as big as them do it gives and increases your brand awareness because you will be in the faces of your customers your um uh, prospective customers secondly it helps you drive traffic right you can drive traffic through social media marketing you can drive traffic to your website you can drive traffic to wherever you want to drive your traffic to right it helps you do that That's it can also time. help to increase over tower you can also help. are you are you are you asking me a question i guess no it can also help to increase your revenue of course it increases revenue it boosts engagement okay you want you want people to engage with your brand it's important that people engage with your brand that is why they do that's why most of these big brands you see them do challenges um, um uh, MTN dance competition MTN dance this um do a do a video dance on on so so and so do a five minutes video of you, you dancing send post it um tag MTN follow follow and um um post and you might get to be selected engagement they want people to engage so social media marketing also helps give you engagement if you have good contents on your socials, if you post good things out there, people will definitely engage with you. It, it helps to boost the community around your business. People want to be part of something. People want to be part of a community, right? Uh, 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 that's why people are fans of football clubs. Now we we'll say this is for men, but even women also want to be a part of something. Everybody wants to be a part of something. People want to be a part of a community. They want to be in a place where they have common goals with people. They have uh, people who have the same ideologies with them. People who have the same common beliefs with them so that they can be able to believe that their voices are heard, right? So um, social media marketing also helps you build a community around your business. People who feel that they are part of this business and they want to be, they want their voices to be heard amongst the business as well. It offers effective customer service. Yes, you can offer effective customer service through social media marketing. You can increase your mentions. Increasing your mentions, I made, I made mention of it. You offer the good service, right? You've offered a good service to a good number of people. And then somebody comes and starts saying, oh, please, I need social and social service. I need it ASAP. Or I need social and social service. Please, who can recommend something for me? And someone, random person, just goes there and mentions your brand name because you were offering a good service to them. And that's what social media marketing can help you do. Social media platforms. We have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Reddit, Snapchat, WeChat, WhatsApp. Name them. There are many, right? So what we are going to do today, before this class ends, I will not forget. Please, um, we all have businesses, most of us, right? This is going to be like an assignment. Please do a buyer persona for your business. Please indicate the name of your business on top on, on the buyer persona, right? You see as that Vanessa did on a dock, should be on a dock. Indicate the name of your business and then try to do a, a buyer persona to be able to know your target audience. Well. It's important. I know why I want to do this. It's very important. Some people have businesses, they don't they know their target audience. If you ask them, they don't know. On a dog, yes, on a dog. Google dog. If you ask them, they don't know. So just try as much as possible to do it, right? And then uh, we are going to look at it as much as we can look at. I'm, I'm sure I'm very sure I cannot be able to look at everybody soon. But the few ones I can look at, I'll pick and look at them and we'll analyze it and know what to do and how to do it better. If you're an affiliate marketer, how can you do it by a personal? If you're an affiliate marketer, um, you have products that you sell, right? You're going to pick the product that you're selling and do a buyer persona for those products. Depends on the product that you're selling, 
right? If you're selling more than one product, then you have to do buy a personal for those products that you're selling. You just pick like maybe two or three so that you don't get um too jumbled up, right? Yeah, if you're going to get it, you get access to it. So, yeah. Uh, any question? Any question from anybody? Sorry about my network today. It's been crazy. I'm sorry. It's, it's the Nigeria we live in. Any question? When are we submitting it? On Thursday. Every, uh, okay, I'm seeing questions on the chat. Uh, what of a buyer personnel for a, for a fashion designer? You can do a buyer, of course, you can do a, a buyer personnel for a fashion brand. It's possible. It's possible. Uh, um, I don't want to give you expo, but let me just breeze into this. Um, um, buyer personnel for a fashion designer. Yes, you can. Because um, if you're a fashion designer, you have certain people that you want to target that will patronize you, even as a fashion designer. I'm very sure that it's not everybody that you want to design for. It's not everybody. You have the level of people that you want to design for. You have the 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 amount of fees that you feel that you're supposed to charge. So that's also going to determine your target audience, right? And that's also going to determine what they need. Are you offering what they need? Your 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 skill set as a fashion designer is it going to offer them what they need, right? Um, the next person says, um, uh, what's the next one? How do we submit the assignment? Um, do it on a Google Doc. Um, Safer is going to send um, a Google form to the group. I, I think there should be a forum where uh, everyone is, is on the forum, right? She's going to send a, um, what do they call it? A Google form link. You click on the link and then you follow the processes to submit. It's not hard. It's not hard. You can just submit it there, right? You can do it on a Google Doc or I don't know. Some of us might not be conversant with Google Doc. You can also do it on a Microsoft uh, Excel, a Microsoft Word uh, document, and then just um, paste the document to the Google form, and we are going to be able to access it there. Please, are we going to get this document I use for this class? Yes, you will. Please, can you? explain call to action okay um uh a call to action uh a call to action means what do you want the people to do right let's take for instance i posted um i say i'm posting something about um let me use the diabetic patient again now I said, I told, I told them about their problem that they have. Oh, you have this problem. These are the symptoms that you have been experiencing. This is why you have not been able to rest. This is how it has been doing you. Um, this is what has been happening to you. But we have the solution for you. This is the solution that we have. This can help you triple times your this. This can do this. This can do that. Maybe it might just be a simple post, right? The call to action is what do I want them to do? Is it to call me? Is it to send me a message? Is it to click on the link to go to my landing page or to go to my website or to click on a link that will take them to where I'm going to give them any valuable information? Or do I just want leads? Maybe I just want their name, their phone numbers, and their email. So the call to action is to click on this link and then it's going to take them to a place where they can either drop their name and their email for me, right? So that's what a call to action. A call to action is what do you want them? What do you want them to do? That action you want them to take, ask them to do it. That's what a call to action is. Hope I've answered that question. Uh, please, for a hairstylist, again, like I said, you can do buy a personal for any brand at all, whether a hairstylist. If a hairstylist, if you're in a particular location, you now do a buyer personnel. What are the kind of people you what are the target target? Of course, first of all, your target audience are women. Let's even start from there. 
Yes, there are a few men that will definitely patronize you, like me. Hey, I can patronize you, right? But your main audience are women, okay? Women that cut their hair. You're targeting women that have hairs that they need to make. That is number one, right? Number two, um, what is the class of women you're targeting? What are the type of hairstyles that you do? Are they hairstyles they can afford? There are salons that some people cannot go to. There are salons that charge from 10,000 upwards, right? So those kind of places, they have their own target. Okay. And now, what are the challenges that your target audience are having? Say you want to be charging 10,000 per hair. What are the challenges that, that, that will make you want to target those people that want to do their hair for 10K? One, they don't want to go to a place that is cheap, maybe because of their social status. Let's, let me just use these simple explanations. They don't want to go to business that is cheap because of their social status. Oh, they have, they uh, maybe they work in top organizations. They want to be classy. They want to look top, no, top notch. So they want to go to a place that they are sure that if they pay that amount of money, they are going to get something really classy, right? Something that when they step out with the hair, the hairdo, everybody will be admiring them. Everybody will say, oh, wow, this hair is top notch. And because of their kind of people that they are, Okay, so that might be their challenge. The challenge might be that they have gone to other places and anywhere, if you're making their hair, you don't, you don't, you don't, you, you, your, your hand is not, how do they put it now? Your hand is not so painful, okay? So those are part of it, but you can still do it by a person for them. Uh, can you recap the assignments? My network went off very well. I'm, I'm going to recap that. <clears throat> are we submitting it when we come online or Thursday at the WhatsApp group? Um, Thursday is supposed to be, I don't know, I'll, I'll find out. I think Thursday is supposed to be a physical class. But submit it online, please. Because I'm not sure everybody will make it physically. Please, can you explain what it means for a post to have a call to action? I just explained that, right? What about retail store in an estate? Uh, uh, who is saying I should answer their question? Who have I not answered the question? <laughs> retail store in an estate. Ah, uh, uh, what kind of retail store? I I will have to have details about that. Okay, what kind of retail store? What are you selling? What is the store that you're selling in the estates that okay. you're trying to sell to people? So that my heart, I might need more details. I can't just answer generic. Um, again, events management. <laughs> Buy a personal for event management. Very possible. It's not everybody that does events. So who are you targeting? Who are the people that you're targeting? What kind of event do you manage? People who are doing wedding, brides, newly wedded couples, right? People who have um um occasions. People who have wedding ceremonies, who are celebrating birthdays, dignitaries. Um, uh, I don't know. That's event management, right? You want to manage people's events. You're not going to be managing somebody that does not have an event. So you're not going to be people that are going to do events anytime soon. So you want to target people who are getting married soon, who are who are getting married, wedding, wedding, uh, newlywed couples. And mostly people that do not have time to plan it for themselves. You're targeting people that want to do birthdays. You're targeting people that want to do naming ceremonies. You're targeting people that want to do events. Maybe if you want to go a bit higher, you also want to target people that, of course, that one you, you might need some um, level of connection. But for that, but you, you don't, that notwithstanding, you still need to target people that maybe want to offer big dignitaries. Dignitaries want to do big events in the society. Sometimes they don't use one event planner, they use one, two, three, more than one. So uh, you can also do that, right? You know the challenges. What will make them want to hire you for an event planning? What are the challenges that are in the events planning business, events, events management niche that people have been experiencing that will make them want to use your brand? Is it that whenever they um, uh, get to someone that does event management, in the end of the day, they get disappointed because what they actually um, thought the people were going to give them was not what they got? 
right? And maybe sometimes this will give them last dish disappointment, or sometime uh, after getting, or maybe they didn't last disappointment. Maybe um, they just uh, um, between the last uh, things just went upside down. So what are the challenges that they have? You you will know better for an event management business. I'm not in that field. Nobody that sells food. Uh, is it uh, physical food? Cooked already cooked food. Is buyer personal? Please not buy you. Be you buyer like someone who is buying from you, right? Where is the physical class going to hold? It's going to hold that next factory. I think they are going to give that information. Um, we we'll need the attendance list now, please. A retail store or a small retail store. Okay. Um, a small retail store, like maybe you sell provision, right? Um, that particular kind of store. Uh, you will mostly be targeting. Uh, uh, you mostly be targeting people within that neighborhood, right? Uh, so there's really no I'm trying to think of how you are going to do that now. Uh, there's really no much of. Uh, I really don't know how to put it now. Let me just think about it. Let me think about it. Um, the assignment again, please. The assignment is please. Do a buyer persona for your business. I'm, I'm going to send the samples that I have. I want you to write a buyer persona for your brand. Okay. For your business is important. So you know who your target audience are. Okay. So you don't run kitty kata selling to everybody. By Thursday, I'm going to be touching much on many other things. Today, I just wanted to give us an insight on what the whole um online space and how to and what it really entails to sell online because i know that so many people have been doing some certain things wrong right so i really want to tell us how to do it online by the next class i should be able to explain more stuff like um um maybe um, um uh, what they call it now social um advertising using um social media advertising using facebook right how to do run facebook and instagram ads easily and um what else will i be showing us again uh yeah that's and also maybe any other um stuff and also how to create a mini website on google um called google my business it's also very quite simple right but i just want us to have an in-depth understanding of what the whole online space looks like and how to actually know who you're supposed to target on the online space because you're not supposed to target everybody. Don't make that mistake of thinking that you're going to target everybody. Now, the assignment again is a buyer persona. Please try as much as possible to do that buyer persona to be able to understand who your target audience are. Okay. It's quite important. It's quite important. Um, that retail store, um, that retail store, I'm trying to think about it now. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite dicey, you know, because you have uh, almost everybody within the neighborhood. But you can see the lawyer down because uh, you want people that are, uh, people that are um, going to buy um, that. Yes, I think this is it now. So the retail store. So you're not like getting people that buy stuff in bulk. Let's start from there. You don't like any people that buy stuff in bulk. So you don't need, uh, and it's an estate, right? So uh, you don't need people that usually have all they want at their homes. So you need people that are going to buy from you um, who maybe they don't have all they want. They need something, emergency, quick fix. They want to buy from you. Right, uh, it's going to be quite dicey, but just try to work something out. I'm going to send you this thing, and you work something out, and then we're going to see. Sorry, we're going to see how we can go about that. Um, I think someone just asked a question. How about cakes and pastries? Ah, oh, cake and pastries. Your cake and pastries. 
right? Um, depends on the kind kind of kicks. If it's um normal, these normal let's see kicks that we use for birthdays and all of those stuff, definitely you're targeting people that have birthdays. One people that have birthdays that have occasion that they want to celebrate with kicks and pastries, right? So those are your target audience. Now you now look at people within that range that will need your cakes and your pastries for their occasion. Uh, yesterday, I think they did a birthday within this my environment, right? And I saw them with cakes and uh, some other small, small jobs and all of those stuff, right? So um, uh, you need to also target people like that, right? So you need people that have cakes, people that want to do, that want to do cakes, people that... Uh, People that uh, want to do cakes, people that have, yes, it's the same thing as customer matter. I think, yeah, I think that is it. So, you need people that want to do cakes, people that have um, occasions that they want to celebrate, they have birthdays that they want to celebrate, they have um, mm -hmm. anything that they have that want them to have it, to want to get the cake. So, yeah, you're going to target all the eggs, right? So, you're not even you're not targeting everybody as well, okay? It's people that are going to patronize your. your your, your cake, if you want to buy cake, then of course I know that the uh, February 29 people buy the cake. <laughs> so you're targeting people that are going to buy cake and all of those kind of things, right? You need people that um, that that need it from you, not everybody. Pastries, of course, um, there are people that also need that as well, right? So you just have to think about your target of it. If you have been saying this thing before, Right, you must definitely have an idea of people who have been buying from you in the past. Try to think of these people. Try to think of what they have in common. Try to think of the things that have been making them in the past. Right, and then try to think of other new things that you can also add. That that you can also add to a list of people that you feel like are going to also be your potential customers or potential clients in the future that are also going to buy from you. And it's going to make it very much easier for you to be able to craft out the canvas now for them, right? Um, I think I've been able to answer all the questions from what I see on my end, okay? And um, the next class, I'm also going to tell us about WhatsApp and the mistake that so many people make on WhatsApp, the way they sell on WhatsApp. So you see that thing that people sell on WhatsApp that you be selling and you are putting a long ring you are putting your gallery on your on your WhatsApp, and you said you are putting you're selling products. Ha! You're shooting yourself on the foot. Honestly speaking, let me just let me even add it up. You're shooting yourself on the foot because personally, I will not open it. I don't know how many people will open it. And coupled with the fact that now WhatsApp has now done this the new update that I'm praying to God Almighty that that update should not get to my site. I don't want to see it. Because it's nice, it's annoying from what I've been seeing. You know, you'll be losing more customers, right? So, um, it's always advisable that you do not post so much on your WhatsApp. People that sell WhatsApp, please, if you're a WhatsApp vendor, let you know. People on WhatsApp, in as much, is a private part, is a private messaging platform, right? It's a private social media platform because it's mostly people that you have their contact. Aside from that, that um, Meta is now adding stuffs and making it uh, uh, between channels and putting in people and uh, trying to celebrities and all of those people in your faces because of course Meta wants to make more money, right? Um, selling on WhatsApp, don't post long rings. It doesn't help your business. It doesn't help your business. People will not, people don't have the time to see them doing those long things that you're posting. You're posting gallery. That's called the WhatsApp status, right? So make short. Yeah, then post it in a more powerful way. Just to make telling it impossible. I think I'm going to talk more to this about this class. It's already um, my time is already fast, man. I don't know if you guys have gotten the attendance. Is the attendance should be posted now so that people can sign their attendance? Let me see. Set the attendance now. Post it. Yeah. 
Ya, Abno? Okay. Um, Sarifa. Okay, are you done? Yeah, can you? Okay, yes, yes so it's okay. It's okay, higher. that's fine. Um, um, I have to address them first before they leave. And I know okay, if I right. send the attendance, I won't be able to do that. Okay, thank you so right. much for uh, your time. And um, the next digital marketing class is going to be physical, yeah. which is on the time table. So I'm going to share that time table again and so that everyone can have access to it, right? Okay, so... Quickly, we're going to have someone from the communications team address everyone. So, um, okay, Adela or Madina, if you're on the call, could you just signify, let me know. Okay, Adela, you can speak now. Okay. Adela, you can speak. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 